DPS. This tends to be a contentious topic among the Destiny community. Many arguments have broken out on what to use for raid or dungeon DPS. In this video, I hope to bring you a guide that covers the meta DPS options at the current moment. Keep in mind that this video will be targeted towards newer players, so if you are a consistent raider or are already doing low mans or speedruns, you may know the information in this video and have most likely already done your own research into the super optimal setups. Alright, let's begin after this short disclaimer. The Mandatory Disclaimer Destiny 2 is a game that constantly changes and evolves. Therefore, the information may be less accurate as time goes on. Therefore, I would always check with another source to ensure the accuracy of the information presented in this video. This is especially true after the release of the final shape, where weapon archetypes may be tuned, which could entail different DPS options being superior then. Alright, to begin talking about DPS, let's talk about the two distinct methods of DPS. Single Weapon DPS and Swap DPS. Single Weapon DPS means that you only use one weapon during the whole of the DPS phase. This means that this method of DPS tends to be easier for newer players. However, you will be sacrificing some damage in favor of this ease of use. The other type of DPS is Swap DPS. This means using multiple weapons in conjunction with one another in order to do DPS. This tends to be the go-to strategy for higher level players as you will be able to do more damage during DPS phases. Now that we have laid the foundations on the two types of DPS methods out there, let me get into the meat of the video, which is DPS recommendations. I will categorize these methods in a sort of progression system, which will hopefully give you guys an idea of what to grind for. I will split it into 7 sections, Baseline, Easy Aspirational, Moderate Aspirational, Hard Aspirational, Extreme Aspirational, Support Weapons, and Supers. Let's begin with baseline DPS options. I will define baseline DPS options as weapons that you can farm without needing to engage in raids and dungeons, and will be your entry to doing those activities to begin farming for the more aspirational weapons. I will also focus on single weapon DPS as it is easier for newer players. For this tier, I will recommend one rocket for most DPS situations, one linear for DPS scenarios where you would need precision damage, and two exotics that can fulfill this role as well. For the rocket, I will recommend the Hothead from Zavala. This will be under the Legacy Focusing tab. The ideal role that you are looking for is Field Prep plus Clown Cartridge. This is really simple to use for DPS scenarios. Just crouch and keep shooting rockets. Field Prep will help with your reload speed and Clown Cartridge will make sure that you always load two rockets with every reload. This makes sure that you have a good amount of DPS during any phase. For our Linear, I will recommend the Taipan. This can be obtained from the crafting quest after unlocking crafting from doing the first mission of the Witch Queen campaign. The role that you will be looking for is Triple Tap Firing Line or Triple Tap Focus Fury. Firing Line is better when you are in a team of 3 or more Guardians and Focus Fury is better when you are playing solo. The two exotics I will also recommend as a baseline will be Grand Overture and Leviathan's Breath. I will recommend Leviathan's Breath over Grand Overture if possible, but both weapons are capable enough to get you started. After getting these baseline DPS weapons, let's talk about some easy aspirational weapons to get. For this category, I will still go with mostly single weapon DPS options, but we will start to get weapons with better damage perks. I will also include one swap rotation that should be pretty simple. Because of this, I will be suggesting two rockets, a linear, and one exotic. For the single target DPS options, let us begin with Cold Comfort. The perks that you would want to get with this would be Envious Assassin and Bait and Switch. The rocket will require a small rotation, but most of the damage will still be from firing as many rockets as possible. Shoot a rocket, then swap to your other two weapons and hit the boss with those weapons. Then swap back to your cold comfort and magazine dump the rest of it. If bait and switch runs out, just switch to your other two weapons to reactivate the perk. This is an improved rocket dump rotation that should see increased damage. The linear that I would recommend is Briar's Contempt. I would recommend Rewind Rounds and Surround It as you roll. The only thing that you would want to pay attention to is to make sure that you have 3 or more enemies close to you when you are doing DPS in order to activate the damage buff from Surrounded. If this is not feasible, you may choose to go with Focused Fury instead of Surrounded. Now for the swap DPS loadouts. This is where our exotic will come into play. I recommend that you pick up a Wither Horde with its catalyst as it will help improve our rocket and linear damage. You are free to use Wither Horde with Cold Comfort if you would like, but I will recommend getting yourself an Apex Predator. The role to look out for this would be Reconstruction plus Bait and Switch. The damage rotation will be to fire the Wither Horde, shooting your energy weapon at the boss, then firing two shots of Apex Predator. Reload your Apex and then simply repeat this rotation. 
once you are comfortable with these initial damage options, it's time to consider more difficult rotations. I would recommend to obtain two more exotics, one more linear, one slug shotgun, and one sword. The first rotation will take advantage of our first new exotic, Izanagi's Burden. The rotation is to have a Hone Shot prepared and to fire the Hone Shot to start the rotation off. Immediately after firing, hold the reload button to immediately reload a Hone Shot. Switch to your energy weapon to proc bait and switch, then fire two shots of Apex. Reload the Apex and repeat the rotation. The next rotation would be using a Linear. This would be Cataclysmic with Force Times Charm and Bait and Switch. This rotation would use both Cataclysmic and Wither Horde. Fire your Wither Horde, shoot your energy weapon to activate Bait and Switch, and then fire your Cataclysmic until you run out of Bait and Switch. Then repeat the rotation. The Slug Shotgun I would recommend would be Heritage. The ideal role would be Reconstruction plus Focus Fury. This would be used if you are running a support exotic such as Tractor Cannon or Galar Horn. The final exotic I recommend in this tier would be Lament. Learning the combo is crucial on some bosses like Crota. The rotation for Lament is to block and then immediately do 2 light attacks and 1 heavy attack. Pause for a second and then proceed with 3 light attacks. This rotation will keep repeating indefinitely. The final weapon I recommend in this tier is Bequest. The ideal role for is Relentless Strikes plus Surrounded. The rotation is to do 2 light attacks followed by a heavy attack. Once you are able to do these rotations consistently, it's time to move up to the Hard Aspirational tier. In this tier, I'm recommending 3 filler weapons, a heavy grenade launcher, 2 slug shotgun options, and 2 snipers. The filler weapons I would recommend are Aramite with Envious Assassin and Controlled Burst, Tech in Force with Reconstruction and Controlled Burst, and lastly, Wilderflight with Auto Loading Holster and Frenzy. These fillers would slot in into existing rotations with Wither Horde or Izanagi and would fill in for your energy slot. These would do more damage than a typical primary weapon, and balancing double special can be harder for newer players, which is why I put it into this tier. The heavy grenade launcher that I recommend is the Cataphract GL3. The god role for this weapon is Envious Assassin and Bait and Switch. The main reason I put it in this tier is that it's harder to obtain as you must get it from Trials of Osiris. I also added two slug shotgun options in the form of first in last out with auto loading holster and vorpal weapon or Nessus ablation with reconstruction and focus fury. This allows you to add it to a rotation with heritage where you fire each shotgun once before swapping to your other shotgun. This is known as slug swapping. The final weapons are succession with reconstruction and firing line or vorpal weapon or supremacy with rewind rounds plus kinetic tremors or bait and switch. These are options that you can use if you already have an exotic in another slot, such as Gallarhorn. Once you are fully comfortable with all these options and want to go further beyond, I would recommend checking Aegis out as he has comprehensive DPS testing and would be a better source for fully optimizing DPS. These rotations might include Double Pellet, Force Horsemen, or even better weapons for the rotations that you have already learned from this video. Please check him out as his DPS testing is extremely concise and thorough, and would give a better representation at the most optimal D2 DPS setups. Support weapons are classified as weapons that apply a buff or debuff to your teammates or the boss in order to increase overall fireteam DPS. This includes Galarhorn with its catalyst, Tractor Cannon, Divinity, and Lumina. Galarhorn should be used when you are going for a more rocket-centric DPS strategy as a fireteam. Firing Galarhorn will give Pack Hunter to all fireteam members which will improve their damage should they be using non-exotic rockets such as Apex Predator or Cold Comfort. Tractor Cannon applies a 30% weakened debuff to any enemy, and is great for increasing fireteam damage by applying this weakened to the boss during DPS phases. Divinity is a trace rifle that when held down or tapped really quickly, creates a crit bubble around an enemy. This applies a 15% weaken on the boss, but most importantly, any precision damage hit on the bubble will be counted as hitting the enemy's crit zone. This is perfect when an enemy has a hard to hit crit zone or moves around a lot such as Air Youth from Crota's End. This should be paired with precision weapons. The final exotic is Lumina. When you kill enemies with Lumina while aiming down sights, you will cause them to drop a buff. Picking it up will store it within Lumina. Then, hip firing Lumina with these stored buffs will apply them on your teammates healing them and giving them a 35% damage buff for 11 seconds. This is great to give your fire team just as DPS phase starts. The final component of your DPS would be the super that you pair with your rotation. On the screen, I will post a tier list on the supers that are good for DPS. Let's go through it quickly and I will explain my reasonings for it. 
In the S tier, we have Golden Gun Marksman with Celestial Nighthawk, Blade Barrage with Star Eater Scales, and Well of Radiance. Well of Radiance is the premier PvE super at the current moment due to the unparalleled utility that it offers. It offers damage resistance, healing, and a damage boost. Golden Gun and Blade Barrage are the premier one-off supers in the current meta. Golden Gun is better than Blade Barrage at the current moment due to Celestial Nighthawk buffs, but both are perfectly viable and incredibly potent. In the A tier is Thunder Crash with Curse of the Falling Star, Needle Storm, and Gathering Storm. These are great one-off supers with good damage, but unfortunately fall short of Golden Gun Marksman and Blade Barrage. However, these are still incredibly potent and are a good choice for any DPS scenario. In the B tier, we have Shadow Shot with Orpheus Riggs, Burning Maul with Pyrogale, Nova Bomb, and Blade Fury with Syntheseps. Shadow Shot is a good debuff super, especially on bosses that cannot be hit with Tractor Cannon due to their distance from the DPS spot. This primarily can be seen with the Sanctified Mine from Garden of Salvation. Nova Bomb is a decent one-off super, but it's somewhat lacking in the amount of damage that it deals. However, I'm willing to put it into B tier due to the fact that it does not take that much time to cast. Burning Maul with Pyrogale is much more situational, as it's harder to hit and less consistent than Thunder Crash. Lastly, Blade Fury with Syntheseps is incredibly potent, but situational because of the add requirement and the fact that it's a roaming super. However, Banner of War is such a potent aspect that the damage makes up for it. In the C tier, we have Silk Strike, Chaos Reach, and Word of Dawn. Silk Strike has the potential for moderate damage, but the fact that it's a roaming super and it takes so long to do its damage makes it very hard to justify for most DPS scenarios. Chaos Reach suffers the same problem, except to a much less extent. It does have a significant amount of time that you are locked into the super, which makes it not ideal for DPS. Finally, Word of Dawn is incredibly situational, as the weapons of light buff that it grants gets completely cancelled out by Well of Radiance, making this super worthless unless you do not have Well of Radiance. Finally, the supers in the unusable category are typically roaming supers that do not do much damage for the amount of time that you are locked into the super, so they make no sense to use for any DPS phase. This should cover all that you would need to know about DPS to get started doing raids and dungeons. If you found this video helpful, consider subscribing to the channel and enabling notifications. Guides will be posted every Monday and Thursday. Thank you for watching and happy farming.